Hello, my name is Professor John Benjamin, and let me introduce you to our new uh, lecture recording studio. So when you come into the TV station, just walk across the hall into this door. And what you'll need to do when you first come in is turn on the lights, which are back here. Lens cap is a little unique. It has two grips here that you press together, and then that pops off. And then you'll need to simply turn the camera on. And you'll need to turn on the microphone as well. Okay, once you sit down, go ahead and launch Panopto. Next, you'll want to sign in. You can sign in using your Blackboard credentials. All right, and once you're signed in, you can just simply hit Create New Recording. Here you can see the video is the FaceTime camera that's connected to the computer. You'll see the difference if I switch to the um, webcam utility. It's dramatically better. So we've got a much better picture um, and we've got control. You can zoom in or focus or reposition the camera also if you wish. So make sure it's on the EOS webcam utility and use the TKGOU microphone um, to record your sound. Other things to keep in mind is if you're using a PowerPoint, you'll want to record your PowerPoint, so make sure that's checked. And you can see there's multiple sources that we can use, uh, but right now we just have one secondary source, and that's the screen. And so we'll have that source checked to built-in display. All right, we're ready to record. All right, then you can see the timer there is ticking away, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch a PowerPoint. So you can navigate that way, and you can also use the pen tool here. Select pen, and then you can use the stylus to draw a little bit more freely. Um, so let's say I wanted to do an equation. I could do it here, like I was drawing on a whiteboard or something along those lines. And then once you're done with your recording, you can just simply um, Windows tab to back to Panopto and then hit stop recording. And it's best to give your recording a name. It defaults to a timestamp, but I'm just gonna call this Benjamin test. I'm gonna upload it to the server. And there's the, the bar here telling me the progress. I can then go to manage my online recordings And then you can see here is the uploading progress. And you won't be able to do any editing until it's fully uploaded. So you'll notice here I don't have an edit button, but as soon as the upload is complete, I'll then be able to edit my slideshow. And there you have it. Now the edit button is available, so I can click on that. And you can see here in P1, this is my audio recording along with my video recording of my face. Down here on S1 is the recording of the screen. And then on SL, it records each of your slides. And now why is this beneficial? If you have a really detailed slide, and let's say for instance, I wanted to block out the video portion, let's say like this, and I put my cursor here, this slide is now a high res version of my PowerPoint, where the, um, the slide that I recorded from my screen, let me move over here, um, is still pretty high resolution, but it's not quite as high resolution as, um, as if, it were, if we were using this slide down here. Keep in mind though, if you do anything visual like video or like in this case, I was drawing um, right here, this equation, um, I wouldn't wanna block off the video version of the recorded screen. I'd want that to play through, so I wouldn't delete that. Now, looking at the waveform will help you to follow where things start and stop and where there's some pauses. So for instance here, um, I'm gonna guess that this is where I start talking, maybe I introduce myself. So I'm gonna simply click and drag, deleting this portion of the video. And the same thing goes with the end. Let's say right here is where I say good goodbye. So I'm gonna click and delete that portion. This area here where I'm not talking is probably a gap. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete out that. Now this is what's referred to as non-destructive editing. So all of your footage is gonna be kept in Panopto, but when I hit apply after deleting these sections, 
um, our students or our viewers won't see these sections. And then you can play it through and you'll see here if I put my cursor there and I hit play. All right, so when you have a PowerPoint, it's only gonna play the portions um, that are in the light area here. So once you're finished and you're happy with your video, you simply hit apply. And it'll ask you, you'll say okay. And then it'll take some more time for it to process. And while you're waiting, you can go back to your folder. Here we are as it's processing at 0%. And even while it's processing, you can go ahead and share that. And so I'm gonna go ahead here and just hit share. And the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to consider is who I wanna share it to. So I'm gonna say change. This is restricted, it defaults to that. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to select your organization. And so that's anyone with a Wesleyan email could access it, or anyone that has access to Blackboard, I should say. Or if you wanna send it to someone outside of our organization, you could click public unlisted. So this is typically what you're going to select, and then you can choose just to import, or I'm sorry, include a hyperlink into Blackboard or an email, or you might choose to embed the whole video, uh, which is more typical of the case. And if I select embed, I can copy the embed code and paste that into Blackboard. And that's it. Essentially after that, you're done. Well, I hope that helps. And keep me in mind, my name is John Benjamin, and I'm here to help you if you have any questions or need any assistance, uh, or even any one-on-one -on -one help. I'd be happy to help. So uh, good luck.